All right, guys, welcome to the weekend. Hope you had a great week. Hope you're going to have an even better weekend. Today, I wanted to give a little bit of context about uh, last week's video, painting light painting with Sam, and a little bit about what this video is gonna be about. So, because <laughs> last week when I got home, my brother's like, did you go up to Oregon and have Sam do that for you? I was like, no. <laughs> so, um, uh, se several months ago, we flew from Safford to Kansas, and then from Kansas over to Oregon. While I was in Oregon, I was helping Eric Rushing from Vans Aircraft uh, work on his RV-10. So that's the main reason I was there, and uh, we happened to meet Sam and did that other video. If you haven't already, go check it out. It's pretty cool, and go check out uh, Northwest Aeronaut. Um, but today, I just wanted to show you guys some tips, tricks, pointers, do's and don'ts about working with an RV-10 canopy and uh, RV-10 cowling. So that's kind of all I got at the moment. Uh, yeah, good. <laughs> just got to my old buddy's house, Eric Rushing from Vans Aircraft. There's his airplane, well there's my airplane, there's his airplane, his RV9. And today I will be helping him on his RV10 canopy. So, start off by sanding it down, gonna get some epoxy on it to try to fill all the little pinholes. And I'll try to show you guys as much of that as I can. But uh, this is what I'm gonna be working on for the next couple weeks, cool. Let's get it done. Ugh. All right, I guess I should explain what I'm doing. It's really hot in here and not all covered in dust, but what I'm doing, and I'll try to get it so you guys can see, um, this fiberglass comes kind of shiny and in order for any epoxy for it to stick to the fiberglass, you have to rough it all up. So I'm taking it from a shine down to um, a matte finish. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol. After that, I will be masking some of the stuff off because I don't really want to get, um, I don't want to get paint down in, like down in his hinge areas and his screws. Um, I don't want to get it down into his rivets, rivet holes or anything like that. So mask it all off. Then after that, I will mix up some epoxy and I'm going to get a squeegee and I'll squeegee on the epoxy and try to fill in all the little pinholes that comes on top of all of the fiberglass because if you got pinholes and you paint on it, it just looks terrible. So we're gonna try to get this to where it's nice and glass smooth. That way, whenever you go to paint it, it will be super smooth and look really, really nice. So that's the goal. Got a little bit more sanding to do. Um, and then I will be masking, cleaning, squeegeeing on epoxy and then I'll be mixing up some uh, micro balloons into the epoxy to try to fill um, some voids and some low spots and things like that. So uh, that's the plan. That's what we've got going on. So you see how this is all kind of flat and you can't really see any shine off of it. If you go back here, see how it's like super reflective. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the epoxy won't stick onto this stuff hardly at all. So you end up having to sand all of it to where it you got the nice uh, matte look, and then it should be good after that. Got it all sanded. Uh, got the shine off of it, so now I gotta take some, oh, and I blew it off. Now I gotta take some uh, isopropanol alcohol. Probably not pronouncing that right. That's okay, you can make fun of me for it. I uh, say things weird all the time, but that's okay. So uh, now I just gotta get paper towel on this, wipe it all down, then I'll be on to masking. Okay, back at it. Here's what's next. Got all that, sanded it off, got it masked off, cleaned off. So now we're going to mix up some um, epoxy resin, use West Systems. So I'm gonna mix this all up, and then I'm going to use a squeegee, and I'm going to squeegee it all on to get it to sit down into the pinholes. And then 
got to wait for that to kind of get a little tacky. We don't want it to fully cure, but after it gets a little tacky, then I'll do another layer. After another layer, it will be uh, probably one more layer. I think I'm going to do three to try to fill all the pinholes. That should be enough. If not, I'll be doing more, but I will do all that. And then while that's drying, there's some um, minor stuff that I got to do some cosmetic work on. So I'll be getting that done but for now it'll just be mixing this up and squeegeeing it on so Dalton's gonna hate me because I've been doing all my videos in vertical I think I've only done one in horizontal so far so sorry Dalton you're welcome <laughs> um, but uh, this is what the epoxy looks like nice yellow got some fast so I gotta get it to work get it back get it done get it on there squeeze it on wait for it to tack up and another layer so you know oh can you see it? all the smoke right here whenever you don't work fast enough with this epoxy Oh, there we go. Yep, whenever you don't work fast, it sets off. And then you can't work with it because obviously it's all solid. So, <sighs> gotta work faster than that. But, got one more mix. Then I gotta redo another apply. Then I'm gonna get some water because I'm dying of heat. So, back I'll show you guys what this looks like after a first coat. See how it's shiny, but there's still the rough texture. The goal is to make it look glass smooth. So, still got quite a bit more to do, but the first layer is on. And uh, I'm gonna go put on some more right now. So, back to so, it. So, got three layers of epoxy on there. I did two fast and then I did um, sorry one slow and it actually turned out really really good so far it's uh, gonna cure up now and I don't know if we can see it from this side of the camera but let's take a look so you see now it's got the nice shine on it and you don't see all of the crazy pinholes anymore so what we do now is wait for the epoxy to cure and then I have to send all of it all over again just barely sand it get it all flat get any little grooves that i might have put on it when i was squeegeeing it and then hopefully i don't open up any pinholes if i open up pinholes i have to go and fill those in but that is that first session down. hey guys back in the shop and after looking at the first few layers of epoxy looks like on this side it's definitely going to need some more, so now I have to sand all of it all over again and then go reapply some more. Um, but that is where I'm at now, so I'm going to get to sanding. Eric is currently working on his cutting, or his cowling, cutting his cowling. So that's what all the grinding is, but uh, let's get back to it. Everyone, good morning. It is 9 o'clock. I'm getting started here. I have to finish sanding off the last little bit from last night, and then I will put on hopefully just one more layer and with that one more layer I think it should be totally all the little pinholes should be totally filled so should be good there and I think while that is drying I will go start working on the challenge starting to get that fit so Eric started that last night and I'll just try to pick up and continue wherever he left off so let's get to hey. it yet again here we are I uh, got it all sanded down I got to blow it off, wipe it down with the alcohol, make sure it's all nice and cleaned off so that when I put the next layer of epoxy on, which hopefully will be the last layer, I'll try to get some uh, pictures of what the epoxy has actually done so you can really, really see uh, what what's going on and what I'm actually doing. It's kind of hard. It's just like put the shine on, take the shine off, put the shine on, take the shine off. It's kind of what it looks like, but uh, whenever I get a second I will take some pictures so you can see uh, the before and afters but clean up and then time for more epoxy as you can tell I am uh, very very dusty but it comes with the job it's pretty fun I enjoy it okay, so I just spent some time laying this out this uh, cut out for the gear leg the nose gear leg then I stood back here and I was looking at it and if you look at it it's not, or it's centered back here, but then as it goes up, it starts to go that way. 
So I don't know how well you can really tell from here. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna mark a center line from off of this, and then I'll match that center line with the center line I drew back here, connect the dots, and then I'll measure seven eighths on either side. And that will give me my inch and three quarters gap that is required for the gear pedal leg. So always take your time and look at how things are going. Yeah, you can see it a lot better there. I'm quite a ways off from center. So glad I cut this before I cut it. Always make sure you measure twice, three, four times before you cut it. Measure twice, cut once. Well, got the uh, cutout done. So cut out for the gear legs done. It's kind of all I can really do before um, I need to actually start fitting it to the airplane. So for now, I'm going to push pause on the cowling. I'm going to do the spinner bulkhead or the aft spinner bulkhead because uh, I'm kind of done working with fiberglass. I feel really itchy and I'm hot and sweaty so it's just sticking to me everywhere. But, yep, gonna work with some metal now. Then hopefully the canopy will be done curing so then I can get sanding back to that. Okay, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to day three of the RV10 project. Um, this morning, I was looking at it. It looks like all the pinholes are actually kind of filled, which is really, really good. So what I got to do now is I have to take the block or I've got several different blocks I'm going to be using and I have to sand everything down, make sure it's all nice and flat. And then once I get to that point, I will be uh, feeling the entire airplane to try to find any low spots or high spots or anything like that to try to get them down so that everything is nice and even, nice and flat and nice and smooth. So that's the project for today and uh, let's get to it. All right, got all of the sanding done. All the pinholes are filled now, which is really, really cool. Looks super smooth. Um, it's a matte finish right now, but if you actually look at it, it actually looks really, really, really smooth. I don't know how well you can actually see it. It's still a little dusty. But uh, what I gotta do now is carefully feel everywhere, all the way around it. And I'm looking for any high spots, low spots, whatever. And whatever I find, I will be filling with epoxy and micro balloons. <clears throat> and that way we try to get it as smooth and as perfect as we can. You can kind of see right here. So if I find any spots, I'll be filling it and it'll look kind of like this up against the pink. So I'm trying to find spots, high, low, whatever that I have to work on fixing. But uh, that's where I'm at now. I actually will probably even turn the lights off, get a flashlight and look down it. That way you can really see the uh, back and forth. But that's where I'm at. So get back to it. Hey, so I got everything marked with tape all over. Kind of looks super random, but any of these little things right here is all of my marks on where to put either add epoxy or maybe just block it because it was kind of uneven. So yeah, here I just wrote block. So it just feels kind of bumpy. So added a bunch of notes for me to follow areas that I either need to fill, add, or just plain and simple block. Um, but that's that, that's all marked. Okay, back from lunch. And I now have everything marked. So I know where I'm gonna be adding or uh, sanding. So I'm gonna start <clears throat> um, by adding epoxy and then I'll sand all of it at once. That way I don't get dust on the epoxy while it's curing. Um, I'm gonna use, I'm probably just gonna go one batch of fast for every low spot. Or maybe if the, it's a small low spot, I'll do um, a couple low spots with um, one pump of each. And I'm gonna be adding 
is this microfiber stuff. And all it is is basically fiberglass that's ground up and all it does is give it texture so that when you go to put it on, it doesn't just run right off. So I'll be adding that to the epoxy mixer to thicken it up so that when you spread it on, it actually sticks to the airplane and doesn't run straight off. Okay, everyone, just got all the epoxy with the uh, micro microfiber in it onto the tin. And just as I was finishing, I managed to stick my arm in one of the spots of epoxy. So, uh, I'm gonna try to get it off. More than likely, that's not gonna happen, so I'll probably be shaving my arm. So that's super, super cool. But uh, anyways, all that's on there. Gotta wait for it to cure. Um, hopefully later on, I can start sanding it. But for now, I'm gonna go back to the spinner bulkhead so be careful when you're working with epoxy i always make messes and this time it ended up to be on me instead of somewhere i didn't want it well this is somewhere i didn't want it but uh try not to make as many messes as i do <laughs> hey everyone good morning today we are working on the cowling hinge pins or at least this morning we are uh, getting them all measured out getting all the center lines drawn and everything we want and I'll just show you quickly so you can see here. So that will be this first cross right there will be a pilot hole. That'll be what I use to click first. And then that line, so if you follow this line, that's the center line for the rivets. And then this line here, I will use to cover with the fuselage. And what that gives us is whenever we put the cowling together, or put the top cowl onto the fuselage, you won't see the, um, we call it the teeth, you won't see the teeth of the hinge pin. That way it'll all be hidden. So it doesn't really make sense right now, but uh, as soon as I get it all up there, I will show you guys what I'm talking about. You can kind of see it in this. So if you see, there's not really much of the teeth or the hinge part of the teeth sticking out. So if I were to just drill it right now, drill the cowling to that right now, you would see all the teeth. So it would look kind of weird. But uh, after I get this drilled up and I get all the pieces together, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. And all it is, is it's just an aesthetic thing. It just makes it look better. So that's what we're working on for now. So let's get to it. So just got this hinge drilled on. Ta-da! what I did, if you look, I let it extend a sixteenth of an inch. So that way, whenever you put the cowl on, so now with the cowling on, if you look down, you just see flat metal instead of seeing the teeth of the hinge like you do on a lot of builds especially like if you go look at my 14 I didn't know this trick when I built that so my 14 you can see him but that's the cool thing about doing this is you learn while you go so this way it looks super nice and super finished so I got three more to do so uh let's get to it okay so one thing I should mention uh, there is a slight downside to doing your uh cowling hinge pins like this um, it's not a big deal if you're precise both drilling and setting it all up um, but if you're not precise you could easily go right past your edge distance so I've got edge distance plus I mean a 64th so it's not a big deal but if you just set it up and don't really pay attention it's really easy to just blow straight past your edge distance on these holes so just make sure if you do it this way that you set it all up to where you still have your edge distance and then it's not an issue so deeper the holes countersink the holes and then rivet it all on so get to it all right everyone i don't know if anybody else is like this but anytime i 
using Clicos and run out of Clicos as soon as every hole is filled. I don't know, it's just very satisfying to me. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, kind of weird like that. Anyways, um, got this on, got the top done. So now I've only got one more side. And then after that, I just have to do the left side of the aircraft and then take it all off, deburr it all, put it back on. Oh, wait, no, deburr, countersink it because these skins are dimpled. Then I have to put the shims on it and then I can rivet it on. So, a few more steps, but... All fine. right, everyone. So, got all of the hinges. Oh, if I could see, feel what I'm doing. Got all of the hinges riveted on. Ta-da! Boom. So, that's all done. Well, minus a few that I can't get to. So, I'm gonna have to try to find a special bucking bar because if you look, the engine mount is right in the way of where I need to get to the rivet. So, and the squeezer I was using doesn't fit. But uh, other than that, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus seven. So I got 14 more rivets, but I have a meeting with Lightspeed. So we'll see how that goes. And then I'll come back and back to it. It's barely finished um, with the last little bit of epoxy and I used significantly less on this go around than I did yesterday to make it look smooth so that's always a good sign um, just wanted to show you what it looks like as of right now so if you look it all looks shiny and you can't really see you can see the honeycomb structure but you can't really see all the pinholes that you could see before so that's really really good it went on really, really well, so I'm super stoked about that and making good progress. So now it's going to be let this cure, then while it's curing, going to go work on the cowling. Alright guys, first half of the morning was getting epoxy onto Eric's 10. Uh, that's still curing. I went and kind of touched it a little bit and it's still kind of tacky, so I'm not going to be able to send that for quite a while, hopefully right this evening. But now I'm going to continue on the cowling where Eric left off. So yesterday we measured um, the distances here, here, over to here, and also here. Made sure they were all the same. So now what I'm trying to do, if I get this to where you guys can see it, then I'm trying to get all of this to line up and match up where it sits nice and happy so got quite a bit more to do i'll be removing stuff from inside of here and inside of here and also um really trying to get these edges nice and sharp and also flattening some of this down so that the two halves will fit together so that's the plan for this afternoon and hopefully i can get that all done and then we'll see what's next. So, back to it. One, it's been oh, about an hour, hour 15. And now we have this. Go over the other side. Looking, trying to find the gap. Just make sure that it's nice and even and straight on both sides. Um, turned out pretty good so far. So I've got that. Now I have to drill a hole right about here, here, and here for screws that will hold these two pieces in the front together. Kind of what the clamps are doing now, but it'll be screws and the nut plates will go on this side. So screws through here into a nut plate on this side. And there's three on each. So one, two, three, and then one, two, three on the other side, but good progress. Now I just got to those hey, you guys, so I kind of dropped the ball while we were up in Oregon and I didn't record anything of me talking or any of the work I did after the point that you just watched to. So I just wanted to kind of talk about like what I did after that with the cowling and as far as that goes. So I pretty much just did the uh, bottom side hinges and then the bottom screws on the cowling for the RV-10 and 
then we kind of ran out of time actually. It was kind of fun. Dalton and I went skydiving because the airport that Eric is based at is where Skydive Oregon is based out of. So we actually went skydiving. It was really, really fun. That was, I think, my fifth or sixth jump now. Um, so at some point I'm gonna get my skydiving license, but it's really cool. I'll get Dalton to put some pictures of uh, his skydive. It's pretty funny. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you like, comment, subscribe if you do. And it's been kind of fun doing the build style for me. I hope that I can keep doing them uh, if you guys enjoy them because the build side is just as much fun as the flying side to me. So hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'm at my sister's right now hanging out with family. So I'm going to get back to my weekend. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Let's have a good rest of the week and go do it all again. See ya.